first talk deals with questions that might be interesting for other countries and other universities as well, namely the development uh, of digital humanities curricula, so study classes and so on, in Germany during the last couple of years. I was involved in this process somehow because I was responsible for one of these uh, uh, programs. Uh, I will mention this one later on and uh, know quite a lot of the scene so I will be able to also answer questions to most of the other programs but if this is not be the case that I can't if I, if I for some reasons can't answer, I know people I can um, um, transfer these questions to. So feel free to ask <coughs> and uh, feel free to ask during my talk. Uh, so it is not necessary to spare the questions. So I will talk <coughs> about digital humanities as a new field of research, new or at least relatively new. I will talk about the importance of DH. Of course, uh, I'm uh, in a way a fan of DH, so uh, you will only have the optimistic perspective. Uh, although I noticed that some people are quite skeptical uh, with respect to these uh, DH activities, especially since there are a lot of DH activities currently taking place. And then I will mention how it is possible to study digital humanities. So there are some universities in Germany that provide courses of study, have developed some kind of educational program, have developed curricula. But there are also other options, for instance, summer schools, where you can uh, get some information, where you can take courses and so on. And uh, since I I'm a regular black lecturer at one of these summer schools, uh, I will uh, mention this one, the Leipzig Summer School on Culture and Technology. My talk is based on a publication uh, that was issued uh, three years ago uh, from the Cologne Center of E-Humanities. Um, I learned that the University of Warsaw or Poland in general is involved in the DARIA uh, activities uh, since about at least one year. Um, Germany was, was involved in these activities a bit earlier in the so-called preparatory phase for DARIA and uh, one of the fields that have been addressed in this preparatory phase is the field of education and the publication on the digital humanities in Germany called Digitale Geisteswissenschaften studieren, how to study digital humanities, was issued uh, in, co in collaboration between the DARIA Germany project and the Cologne Center for e-humanities. In a way, e-humanities and digital humanities are used synonymously, so e-humanities, some people describe them as electronic humanities or like electronically humanities, the most usable term is um, enhanced humanities, well, enhanced by digital means in a way. Professor Manfred Thaler was responsible for, the, uh, for this publication, but he was especially responsible for bringing this group together. So for several years, he invited people to uh, talk about programs on digital humanities and in a way this initiative initiated some of these <coughs> curricula, some of these uh, university programs. So since he addressed institutions about how they handle digital humanities in the education, some of these institutions, uh, well, at least um, invested even more time than before in these activities. So there's a bunch of co-authors of this, uh, more or less from each university you have uh, a couple of co-authors. It is not related to Germany only, so you have some reference to Graz in Austria and you have also some reference to Groningen in the Netherlands, 
but uh, its focus is definitely German. Well, first of all, you probably know, but I should like to uh, bring back uh, this information. Uh, what are digital humanities? Well, in a way, digital humanities is not a fixed subject. This is, uh, in a way, a large, it is a term that is used for a broad range of different um, research fields within the broad range of humanities. So the humanities deal with society, with culture, with language, with history, with philosophy, and so on. Even archaeology is uh, used to uh, be described as a kind of a uh, humanities field, although this is slightly changing in the last couple of years. So um, information technology changed, as you know, the world, and it, therefore it also changed the humanities. So uh, humanities <coughs> do not work with uh, classical means uh, alone any longer, so more and more work is in a way enhanced by information technology or puts information technology in its center. Well, for instance, since new ways of searching or analyzers are possible by IT, uh, more and more new interdisciplinary projects emerge. So interdisciplinary meaning that you have some kind of uh, science for instance, uh, computer science as one of these fields and uh, one humanities, for instance, language studies or so. <coughs> the humanities allows scholars in the humanities to use methods or also approaches to deal with different kinds of media. So not only text, but also images, also, ima uh, also videos, of, of, for instance, uh, performances and so on. In a way, computational linguistics is also a field within the digital humanities. However, in a way, we are not filed in this field uh, in the strict sense, any longer at least. So in, in the beginning of, say, the TI initiative uh, 20 years ago, uh, so the text encoding initiative, there was a very strong uh, branch within the TEI from the field of computational linguistics. But computational linguistics developed more and more into the field of engineering. So for instance, if you have an, uh, a mobile phone, then you have some kind of language technology in it. And this is the technology based on this is not related to linguistics any longer, we have to say, we have to admit. So this is. Uh, even some years ago, uh, one of the heads of the, um, of the IBM's lab on language technology once mentioned, as soon as I fire a linguist, the recognition rate increases. So uh, the point is that sometimes background knowledge or linguistic knowledge even harmed the results. So they, they drifted away somehow. However, since digital humanities centers around language, and since digital humanities makes use of some kind of technologies, uh, ways of modeling language information, um, this division uh, is not that strong any longer, and uh, it, they, they come, currently I see a tendency that both fields come together, especially if people who work with uh, literary text dive into the literary text and want to make some kind of, uh, find some results in this text, they make use of language technology products. So they use lemmatizers, they use uh, parsing technology, and so on. Well, uh, computational linguistics is not longer a strong part of uh, digital uh, within the digital humanities, but it is still a part, and from my perspective, uh, its role is uh, increasing now. Some other fields uh, in the digital humanities increased much more recently, uh, in the last couple of years, I have to say. So um, 
doing some kind of literary studies, uh, what they call, for instance, distant reading, that the scholar is not reading the text by himself or by herself any longer, but makes the computer, tries to uh, find a computer program that reads these thousands of books and find interesting texts that can be inspected by, by the researcher, by the scholar, uh, later on is definitely a new field. So people uh, realize that it's not possible to, to access the full richness of literature in the last couple, that has been written in the last couple of centuries, but it might well be that some of the texts are lost because nobody realized its, its geniality, its, uh, its, its class, its um, and <coughs> therefore, maybe computers can help to find interesting texts not available for scholars who would be who read everything. But this is only a hypothesis. Maybe <laughs> it doesn't work. This might well be the case. So, so it's, but uh, there's this interesting, um, interesting publication uh, from John Onsworth uh, uh, from Library Sciences or Library Studies uh, that has been issued some years ago, and this is uh, called How Not to Read 10 Million Books. So when uh, Google Books uh, published its uh, its treasure, uh, they realized that it is not possible to read so many books, and if you want to find something, you need some help by computers. <coughs> but it's not only the case that IT, uh, tech, well, information technology helps the humanities. Uh, you also have the development that it is, uh, that you have these uh, effects uh, vice versa. And this is from the, from the very beginning of the uh, digital humanities. So uh, I would like to say or to claim that even the uh, progress in the internet, uh, the World Wide Web development was heavily influenced by uh, by uh, digital humanities activities. This is, uh, can be, in a way, this claim can be supported that some of the researchers that are in the field of, um, um, uh, of, of internet technology at that time actually started in digital humanities, that uh, the head of the, uh, of the text according initiative at that time was later on asked to develop the XML standard by the World Wide Web Consortium uh, that T. Berners-Lee, who actually is the father of the HTML standard, uh, did a class in hypertext studies. So this is the early, the early beginnings of the, of the DH uh, community <coughs> have been at least highly influential for the development of the web. And this is one extreme example, but uh, there's also uh, a lot of other potential exa potential uh, areas where the IT branch can make use of the, uh, of the activities and of the progress that the humanities, that the digital humanities do. So I think this is beneficial for both sides. Of course, the humanities benefit from the IT. This is obvious. As, as I mentioned before. So the digital, the IT related stuff uh, become more and more important in all branches of the humanities. And I would say for the curricular <coughs> thing, a good background in IT that is given by a, uh, by a good education uh, in digital humanities. So a good background in IT increases job opportunities immense tremendously. And I do have some good examples for this as well. Uh, when I taught in <coughs> Bielefeld University, I was, as mentioned, uh, in a way responsible for the setting up and the uh, performance of the, um, of the text technology class and the text technology studies. <coughs> and a lot of my former students who did not went into research so who left uh, academia, went to fields that have not been the classical fields of application for humanists. So uh, they went to, uh, uh, 
to Bertelsmann in the IT, so, so large media concern in the IT department, not in the media department, where 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 started their jobs in uh, for large communication uh, companies um, and so on. So some of them mainly got their job because of this. IT competences, and then they could. So I think this, it's it's a thing you have to, well, at least for the, for the universities uh, when setting up new educational programs, uh, it is definitely a, a bonus if you can demonstrate that job opportunities at least, uh, yeah, well, the job opportunities um, are emerging through this background knowledge. Although, uh, speaking slowly, it indicates that there's no guarantee for this, of course. But it definitely helps. Well, the question is how to study digital humanities. Well, in most cases, uh, uh, and in the, in the early time as, uh, especially, uh, you have to combine uh, digital humanities studies with some kind of traditional field of the humanities. So for instance, you study literary studies or linguistics or philosophy and cultural or cutler or what, whatever. It is uh, possible to com combine this classes with uh, specialized programs in digital humanities. So speaking of myself, uh, when I studied linguistics some years ago, um, I had a minor on computer science, so in a way this was, I, I did study computational linguistics, uh, but uh, although then it was helpful to combine it with some kind of, uh, uh, to combine it with a minor. But nowadays, this is uh, not necessary to uh, go for this combination only, uh, you also have some specialized master programs that are specialized for, uh, and even one uh, BA uh, that is uh, specialized for digital humanities related things. So, but what do you study if you study uh, digital humanities? Well, ideally, you should not forget the humanities. So, in a way, this is, uh, in a way, also a danger. So, if you if you do not care about the humanities, then you do not study. Uh, then you, then you might study applied computer science, but that's it. So that's not the digital humanities. You have to, uh, to have to uh, learn something about the specific subject or selected fields within the humanities. Uh, you have to learn about approaches or standards for processing, for production, storage also long-term archiving of research data, and so on. So uh, what is not mentioned here, but what is also, uh, if I show the uh, special programs, uh, quite obvious, you have to learn programming language or several programming languages and so on. Now I will give some examples from specific programs uh, that have been developed in uh, Germany. And uh, in a way, I excuse myself for having, um, uh, for giving some of the information in German because it was really difficult to uh, translate some of these fields. But I will uh, try to explain what is actually going on in these fields. I'm starting with Bielefeld, uh, not only because it's in alphabetical order, but uh, in Bielefeld, I was responsible for setting up. Bielefeld developed a bachelor. So a bachelor and especially a minor of the bachelor uh, on text technology. And this has been later on extended to, well, the name has been extended to text technology and computational linguistics. As, as it is indicated here, it is, a, it is a minor. So it is German and Nebenfach. So you have to combine it with a major, a bachelor major. And Ideally, or well, I think this is necessary, this major has to be a humanity. So, of course. Uh, as most of the bachelor studies, it takes uh, three years. Uh, you have a specific way of uh, European um, points and so on. 
what is more interesting is that you have some obligatory classes. So first of all, you have some kind of foundations of text technology, so IT stuff and so on. Uh, foundations on well, how to use computers and so on. But yeah, and then you have also a kind of a, um, a longer, um, longer class or a longer um, program part are so-called formal languages. This is a field that has been developed in linguistics. Noam Chomsky is one of the uh, most prominent figures uh, responsible for uh, promoting these ideas and formal languages are in a way the source for programming languages, but are they are also, of course, a, 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 a rich field in, within linguistics because uh, linguists sometimes think about uh, how to model how to model natural language, and they want to model it formally, so we make use of formal languages. Uh, so you have some kind of uh, this technical background, but also the logic set theory and all these things. Um, then there is an integral uh, integral um, part of this. Uh, you have to learn at least one programming language, uh, and you have to make use of this programming language in so in a, in a kind of a project, so you have to do something with this programming language. You have to learn about standards that are used in digital humanities, text technology. You have to learn something about electronic publishing, publishing methods, or the way uh, currently publishing works with uh, single source publishing that a text is written once and is uh, processed once, but the media uh, that are uh, usable to uh, um, to read the text or to uh, uh, access the text might be different. So, and uh, of course, it is also uh, important to learn something about the integration of heterogeneous media because uh, back in the age where we only had books, uh, we only had two two modalities: pictures and text. And uh, this <laughs> changed, so we can include videos. We can uh, inti integrate um, uh, uh, user uh, adaptable scenarios like computer games or something like this. So, and you don't have to bring uh, anything uh, as a prerequisite. So it's this study is without prerequisites. Um, Next city, next university, the Technical University of Darmstadt, a um, uh, city close to Frankfurt, uh, with a very good, as I said, technical university, offer um, two, uh, two programs, uh, a bachelor, <coughs> but this is in a way a very more or less almost traditional way to address uh, the uh, digital humanities. So we are currently working on a uh, new digital humanities program, but uh, in this joint Bachelor of Arts, you had to uh, take uh, one one subject for, from the humanities and one information technology related uh, subject, and they are combined. But this is done under the roof of a spe specific program, so the, you do not study these fields isolated, but uh, you combine these. So, you, for instance, you have some kind of um, uh, main uh, interest fields like corpus linguistics or computational linguistics, and on, on the same time you have to learn some about something, for instance, for English studies or literary studies, or even the old uh, the old stages of, um, of of the languages, like if you have to do medieval studies and so on. But you do have also a master on literary and linguistic computing and uh, this master is starts after you finished uh, your um, uh, your BA and if you have a, uh, a specific BA if you uh, uh, finished a specific humanities BA program this is a good complementary complementarizer for this uh, humanities studies so for instance, if you studied a BA with, for German studies or English studies, then you can study 
as a master, this master in linguistic or and literary computing. So, of course, uh, like all of these studies, they have to be studied consecutively. So you have some kind of basis courses, <coughs> basic courses, and then you uh, go on in the next year with the more advanced courses. And of course, one semester is devo devoted to the master thesis. So. Um, in Gießen, you do have a course of study from computational linguistics and text technology, uh, where you learn something about computational linguistics as the name in, in, in life. And you can study this as a master uh, um, main major subject or as a minor. So you can combine it with uh, a different branch and uh, you learn. Well, they also have kind of a uh, focus on e-learning, but you have computational linguistics and text technology as a main adult. One thing that is in a way related to digital humanities, but also shows that the application areas of digital humanities is much broader, is the master in language technology and foreign language learning and teaching. So this is a very specific uh, master program. It does not exist in any other place in Germany, at least as far as, well, at least in Germany, and I do not know of any other uh, courses of study like this. So here you learn specifically, in a way this is a master for e-learning for, for instance, German as a foreign language or some other language as a foreign language, so how to help to produce educational material for people who learn a foreign language. And uh, this is, as you uh, definitely know, uh, is done more and more computer supported. So you do have a lot of uh, learning uh, programs, e-learning programs uh, that adapt automatically uh, to the level of the language learner you can make you can choose uh, the vocabulary, uh, the level of uh, um, well, the level of the of the learner, and this is done by uh, by computational by IT, or this is supported by IT, and this course of study, this master, especially addresses these things. So, so you have to learn about uh, foreign language. Um, a different approach. So uh, here, up to now, I mentioned some of these specific programs within the university that reflect that uh, that are reflected in, in in master programs and BA programs. Leipzig uh, is a place where where they choose a different approach, and maybe this is also comparable. Uh, with their approach taken here, because what you what they provide is some kind of a module that complements the knowledge that have been uh, well, a module that can be combined with other kinds of um, with, with in a way with all the bachelor or master studies that are available. Um, Leipzig installed uh, or managed uh, to uh, to install uh, what they call a Humboldt chair. So in Germany you have the Humboldt. Um, well, this is a, a special program that uh, tries to collect as much money as is necessary to to get some of the high level uh, researchers to Germany to uh, uh, to install them in in the university and the, in a way, the government uh, takes care of five years of funding for that professor and this, uh, this and his chair. And later on, the university commits itself to continue the funding of this chair. So we really want to do something and uh, on a permanent basis. And the, 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 the uh, the professor who has been, um, I would like to say, awarded this chair in Leipzig is Gregory Crane, and uh, he 
is the humble chair for at the, at the, at the newly developed digital humanities group. So, and what he and his group did is to um, offer a module uh, on digital philology, so digital humanities for the philology. And in each year, they offer several classes that can be taken and can be used to get some kind of certificate that uh, some digital humanities knowledge um, has been studied. These courses can be taken in sequence or individually. And <laughs> in a way, um, this helps uh, graduate students uh, to prepare themselves also for some kind of uh, work in, 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 these, um, in these fields. Würzburg is the place where you can study real digital humanities. Uh, Fotis Janidis is the head of this, uh, uh, of this group uh, where I study uh, digital humanities either as a bachelor major or bachelor minor and uh, you have to combine it with the other, with another uh, field and what they are dealing with especially is uh, text encoding but their main research field are digital editions. So Fotis Janidis uh, is somebody who uh, worked well in editorial studies, in, uh, well, he was involved in some editorial projects. So if you perform critical editions, as you might know in the TI, they have a special uh, module for critical editions and uh, we are continuously working on this as well. So um, they, um, these, these things uh, are done within the DH, of course, in the digital humanities as well. We also care about uh, text and image analysis, and we also deal with multimedia. This is also <coughs> available as a master program, so you can have a, as a master, but only as a major, so in case you have already studied uh, a bachelor uh, in humanities, then it is a good complementarization of this if you would do this master or of course there are also some people who do two who try to do two masters so this is also in a way of complementarization it complements well with another master as well okay the last thing I would like to mention for the questions are uh, summer schools and uh, I'm especially would like to mention these summer schools because it might also be interesting for uh, people who do not want to make a full study abroad but only yeah, select some interesting uh, interesting uh, fields to study and this is uh, perfectly doable um, because you don't have you don't lose time uh, you can do it in the summer <laughs> so you don't have to uh, 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 go for a full semester abroad if you want to do this and yeah. I think most notably although it is also it's difficult to to choose from the existing programs but um, most notably uh, from my point of view are these three uh, digital humanities schools namely it's the Summer Institute of Victoria um, in Canada so British Columbia uh, the Digital Humanities program at Oxford Summer School. Uh, I learned that somebody from Oxford was here in uh, uh, some weeks ago, so essentially this is a group that is also uh, involved in these things. James Cummings. James Cummings, yes, is the head, yeah. Uh, and the European Summer School in Digital Humanities in Leipzig, and I will uh, mainly talk about the Digital Humanities Summer School in Leipzig because I was involved there uh, in the last couple of years and um, these summer schools also collaborate in a way that they give out a graduate certificate of digital humanities for those who managed to, uh, um, if I remember well, uh, who managed to uh, uh, take three of these uh, summer universities. So, uh, and it doesn't matter 
where we are. So if you take three in uh, three subsequent uh, 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 years at one place, it's fine. And if you mix it and uh, you do it in one year, well, if you can afford it, of course, <laughs> it's also one of the problems in Oxford and uh, Victoria. It's uh, it's quite expensive, but uh, nonetheless, uh, if you can also do this uh, way, way at least do not overlap. So, um, well, uh, one of the interesting things in of the summer school is also to bring together the students, uh, the young scholars or the older, older scholars from different branches in the humanities that are interested in the IT. So it is not only that you go to a class, but you have all these uh, uh, social uh, contacts with people who are interested, and people from all over the world. This is also quite interesting. And uh, this allows, for instance, also to uh, bring new projects on the way. Uh, so you do a lot of networking in these uh, summer schools, or you are at least have the option to do some networking there. Uh, the focus is, of course, to discuss and exchange information, except for learning something. So you are inscribed in one of these classes, so you learn a lot of these things, of course. Uh, but you also want to present new technologies, um, and you also want to present, present, uh, or implement uh, practical, uh, um, well, something real practical, some 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 real projects you want to do something and uh, program this, for instance, and demonstrate this for the whole group and so on. Uh, as I mentioned, I would like to uh, finish with an overview of the Leipzig Summer School. The Leipzig Summer School, it takes always two weeks in a row, and these are two intensive weeks because you have workshops, and uh, workshops are uh, so you have uh, 15 um, classes, uh, workshop classes. So half of the day is devoted to, to workshops. So you inscribe in one workshop, and that's uh, you have uh, 15 classes. So that's more or less what you would do in one semester at your university in a specific class. Uh, then uh, in the afternoon, there are public lectures. There are project presentations, so if you apply for uh, taking place in the summer school, you have to uh, apply for, you sh it's probably helpful if you also hand in a potential project you are interested in, so you are, uh, maybe you are choosing to present this project as well. There are poster sessions, and there are several panel discussions where uh, invited guests talk about specific topics. Uh, to get you uh, some kind of an um, um, idea on what is going on, I um, mention the workshops that have been uh, performed last at the last summer school, so this year in July, uh, no, in, well, in August, uh, and um, this started. Well, these are you have to choose one of these workshops, so you were free to choose, for instance. Uh, a specific course on XML done by a Spanish professor. Uh, I offered uh, a course on query in text corpora, so how to find structures in large amounts of text. Um, um, a group of uh, persons offered something about comparable corpora. Group from uh, from Berlin offered something about historical text corpora in the humanities, problems of digitization, annotation, quality assurance, and so on. Uh, the Humboldt Chair, uh, the before mentioned Humboldt Chair from Leipzig, offered uh, a class on what they called Open Greek and Latin's workshop. Oh, sorry for the uh, typo. Um, there was one course uh, on advanced topics in humanities programming with Python. So if this was specifically directed, uh, this, this course specifically was addressed to persons who already knew a programming language, or the, who already knew the Python language and want to do something with this, with this language. One of the uh, uh, classes that runs there for since 
since many years uh, is done by Jan Ribitsky uh, from uh, Krakow and in the last couple of years uh, he gives this class together with uh, this workshop together with Mace Eda from, uh, from a different university but also in Krakow and they talk about stylometry and computer assistant analysis <coughs> of literary text and uh, talking about Krakow, Krakow is also the place where the next large conference on uh, the next large conference on digital humanities that takes place in Europe is going to take place, namely uh, in two years from now. The next next one is going to take place in Sydney, but uh, 2016 uh, it is going to be in Krakow. Um, there's uh, another course on digital methods in archaeology uh, done from. Uh, some scholars from Tübingen, so archaeology is also still a field in the uh, in the humanities, but they make more and more use of digital methods. So, not to mention uh, GPS stuff and uh, photos and uh, chemical analysis and all these things. Uh, Laszlo Hunyadi from Hungary talked about multimodal corpora and Lynn Siemens. Uh, um, from 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 Victoria, uh, Canada uh, talked about some kind of administrative things. So what, how to perform large projects, how to perform large um, uh, digital humanities projects. So that's it uh, for now. So I would like to give a short summary. I talked about the digital humanities as a growing field of research. Uh, as you already know, uh, there are more and more research projects that are active in this field. We are, for instance, funded by, the, by German funding organizations, uh, but also by the European Union, by the European Commission. And in a way, consequently, young researchers have to bring the knowledge to perform these projects. So it is uh, not possible for the, say, the principal investigators to do all the work alone. But from my point of view, it is even more important that the substantial knowledge in the age does not only help to get some things done in your university and some research programs, but it definitely helps you, or it definitely helps the students to find job opportunities outside academia. So I'm happy to answer <laughs> some of the some questions. My name is I Irina Vasadyuk, and I have a question: If um, digital humanities is a research field, uh, so what is the scope of the research questions that this area uh, brings? Uh, so what is it uh, trying to improve, or what kind of uh, uh, territories that it would like to find out? Yes. Uh, I think this is a quite uh, a difficult question because uh, digital humanities is not one field uh, within the humanities. So you have, in a way, one philology and IT methods. So what digital humanities really deals with is finding methodologies from the IT point of view that are usable for different tasks in uh, for different humanities, but definitely there are uh, large differences between the single fields. For instance, if you talk about a lot of research that has been done in, in working with global positioning systems, these are this is very relevant. It might be relevant for archaeology, but it might also be relevant for, say, literary studies, because if somebody travels from one place to the next, that might be interesting to, uh, to spot these things. So if you go into Joyce or so, and then it might be interesting where Dublin uh, this person worked. So, in a way, you offer some techniques that might be interesting, especially for the uh, for the humanities. But it is definitely not as clear as a clear cut field with a certain with a very specific uh, fundamental research question as you have it, for instance, in some fields of uh, physics or uh, uh, astronomy or uh, yeah. So this is also a problem that uh, sometimes the uh, real research questions, the very sharp research questions, uh, are not available. But yeah. 
Have you heard about, about uh, any applications of DH methods uh, in the field of musical research? Yes, definitely. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I had to restrict my presentation uh, to uh, those things, and uh, since especially there's no curricula uh, uh, done yet, uh, I, um, um, I, I haven't mentioned these things. But uh, for instance, there's some kind of side project, some music encoding initiative. So people who uh, make you make use of the uh, results of the text encoding initiative to uh, to uh, to describe and to formalize text. Uh, in the field of uh, music, then there, are, uh, so how to 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 find the uh, writing system and an uh, advanced writing system for musicology. Uh, then you do have some people who, in, in in Germany, for instance, the University of Paderborn, together with uh, the music uh, uh, uni university, I would say, um, or uh, in Detmold. Uh, way uh, work on uh, on texts from uh, um, Karl Maria von Weber, uh, who German uh, German uh, composer, and uh, way bring together the problem that you have, yeah, the information about music and his his own writings. Um, I am not an expert on. Uh, I, I have not heard yet about some kind of automatic analysis of music, but I. I'm quite certain that this is a field where more and more people will dive into in the next couple of years because it is so natural uh, that you try to find these, mm, yes, uh, uh, to, to use these analysis software. Uh, and you have a lot of things going on in in, in computer science. So, for instance, uh, finding the the right title automatically if a song is performed on the radio or even if somebody tries to sing a song. Uh, so yeah, but uh, probably uh, an, an emerging, emerging field, yeah. Thank you very much.